This is the 2024 Chevrolet Trailblazer. It's the LT trim level. And in today's Vehicle Visionary video, we're going to give you the information to answer the question, do you get more than you pay for? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Today, Carrie and I are at Red River Chevrolet in Bossier City, Louisiana. If you want to know more about this model, check out the link in the description of the video. And whether it's you yourself saying, I need a new vehicle that is a gas sipper, but it's still going to get me down the road with no problems, have some great features and functionality, great technology, and a very nice looking interior, but not cost you an arm and a leg. This is definitely something to consider. Let's dig in and find out exactly what we have. So I'm gonna have Carrie come on in over here, and we're gonna start looking here at the front end. And as we take a look across here, you might notice it looks kind of similar to something else that we could find on the lot here at Red River Chevrolet, which is the Blazer. It's a smaller version. The front end looks very similar to that. When you look at the chrome across here, it's nice because it's not just one solid strip. I like the fact that we have the areas that run off this way and this way. It just kind of gives it some nice character lines. When we look at our daytime running lights, all of that's going to be LED. You're probably seeing kind of a flickering effect. That has to do with the camera. It doesn't have to do with the vehicle. I'm not sure if you're actually seeing that or not, but I know a lot of the time our cameras do that here on YouTube. Also, LED headlights going to be down here on this part of the bumper. Now, you'll notice there's no fog lights here, but I think because of headlight placement, honestly, that's not going to be a big deal because those lights will shine enough light in the entirety of the vehicle or what's in front of it I should say to where that shouldn't be a problem and again kind of that similar to the blazer look we have the very nice large grill right here that fits the vehicle really well one thing you won't find here which is actually a benefit is gloss black or what a lot of people call the piano black finish you have the silver here you have kind of a matte black finish down here but the good thing about that is that that is not going to show damage the same way that the gloss black will. We'll also find that this model is front wheel drive. Now keep in mind, you're not breaking the bank in price here. So you're not gonna have a huge rim. This is a 17 inch rim, a combination of the silver finish and the gloss black. So I think that works out pretty well. Let's talk about tire and wheel size. The width on your tread is going to be 255 and then a 60 series sidewall. And as we already talked about, surrounding that 17 inch wheel. Let's take a look at the remote and see what we have here. For well under $30,000, you get remote start. That's always a good thing. See all the other features that are there? A small, sturdy remote, it looks nice. Chevrolet logo on the back. And how about your side view mirrors? Well, they're going to be manually folding. Sometimes people ask me to show how to manually fold these mirrors. I don't know why. I think that's as easy as boiling water. You really don't need a tutorial on that. Now you won't find the turn signal indicators built in here. This is the LT trim level. So that's just one of the things you won't find. Not a big deal, I don't think. Body colored mirror caps. Now here's a bonus. They are heated and obviously power adjustable. Here on the body color door handles, on the front doors at least, you'll find this button right here. That's passive entry. When you have that remote with you and you walk up to the vehicle, you can push that button and lock or unlock all four doors. That's easy to deal with, very helpful. We'll also have the roof rails up here to make things look nice. I guess you could potentially get some crossbars and add that and well, have a little more cargo capacity up here. Now you don't have your traditional shark fin antenna up here, more of kind of an old school look of sorts. I don't think that's a big deal. Most people aren't too worried about that. You will likely need to take that off before you go through a car wash if you do that, or if you wash by hand, no big deal. Rear roof spoiler finishes things off here. It gives it a really nice look back here as far as that works. It also allows air to flow over the window and that helps keep the window, rear window clean when the vehicle's in motion, especially at higher speeds. But whether it's raining or when the window does get dirty at times, you have that rear window wiper. We'll finish things off here with our nice look on the tail lights back here. Wrap around the vehicle. I like that look. Looks pretty nice. Obviously have the hazard lights turned on right there. There is our Trailblazer logo, Chevrolet logo. And in case you didn't believe me, because sometimes people ask some funny questions in the comments section, there's the proof. It's really the LT trim level. 
Here under the hood, the 1.3 liter three cylinder. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna kind of cringe over that, but keep in mind, it's a gas sipper. It's great for the college student or new driver. 155 horsepower, 174 on the torque. It is mated to a CVT. Try it before you buy it, right? Some people like the CVTs, some people don't. Now, let's talk about a really important thing here, and that's going to be our MPGs. Let's see if we can give those to you. 29 city, 33 highway, 31 combined, and it looks like three point, let's see if I can see that, 3.2 gallons of gas for every 100 miles driven. And you don't have capless fuel fill. There's a lot of people that don't seem to like capless fuel fill very much. So you have what I call an old school gas cap here. That's how you use that in case you haven't ever had a vehicle with a gas cap before and you're wondering about that. It's not that complicated. It's kind of like those power or those manually adjusted, manually adjusted, manually folding. I'm gonna leave that in there this time. Kerry's laughing his head off behind the camera. Manually folding side view mirrors. You really don't need a tutorial on how to use that. The whole reason I came back here was not to make you laugh, but to tell you that this gas tank is 13.2 gallons. So let's talk about practical usability. Now you don't have a power tailgate back here. However, you can push the button right here and just barely lift that and the dampening takes over. That's very nice. 25.3 to 54.4 cubic feet of cargo capacity. Now you can see that I have the seats folded flat. This is how we maximize cargo capacity. But notice this, notice how the floor is kind of sunk in right here. What you'll notice is there's a couple of different areas right here, one right here and one right here. So it's kind of a shelving area of sorts where you can put it wherever you want to. So let's move this up right here. There's your second option that puts everything at more of a flat level. But the good thing is, is you have those options to change the positioning of the floor. You also have this. I like the fact that when you need to gain access to your spare tire and the tools to change a tire, that the floor stays in place right there. Just makes it a little bit easier. Or if you wanted to, you can actually take this all the way out. That's easily removable. No big deal where that's concerned and you can see what all is there. You'll also find some cargo area lighting back here and some tie downs. Let's see if Tom can get this in without any trouble. Get to see some more bloopers here. There we go, come on. You know, y'all wonder why I don't have bloopers in my videos. I usually take them out, but we'll leave them in today so you can laugh at some stuff. You can see you have a couple of tie downs and there is cargo area lighting. Only on one side is where you're gonna find the lighting, but I think that will get the job done. It seems to be bright enough to light this area after dark. And let's talk about what your rear seat passengers are going to find. Now the rear seats don't recline. That's kind of similar to the Honda HRV. In case you're wondering about comparing those two, you don't find on this trim level air conditioning vents or any kind of USB connectivity or anything like that. I do like the fact that the floor is completely flat. That's beneficial. So if somebody sits in this middle seat, their legs aren't up like this if there was a transmission tunnel. Now, something that is unique and interesting back here is you have a rear seat pocket here on the driver's seat. Now you also have one on the passenger seat. It's just in a different spot. Kind of an interesting thing. Not completely sure why that is, just very interesting. In fact, the whole back of the seat is different. You even have this area right here that a lot of the time is really meant to give increased leg space in case the seat's way back. So I do have a reasonable amount, actually quite a bit of headroom above my head. I'm five foot 10 in case you were wondering. And if the driver wants to exercise 155 flying down the road horsepower, there's the oh crap handle. There's one at every door handle or every door. <laughs> we're gonna leave the bloopers in. And we're gonna do things backwards today. I'm gonna let Carrie show you the door panel over there. Now the armrest, I do have to say, is a little bit on the firm side. I don't know how that would work as far as actually putting your arm up there. Carrie, not too impressed with that. But since you're gonna be sitting in the front seat, it isn't such a big deal necessarily. Now you do have a door bin down here, or really I would call that more of a bottle holder than a door bin, but it could be used as a multitasker. Okay, we've shown you quite a bit. We have a good bit left to show you here in the front seat, but that one main question a lot of you have, some of you even ask it in the comment section, I think without watching the video, hint, hint. Well, for those who do that, they wouldn't have a clue I said that because they don't watch the video. But what's the price? $25,990, not too bad in this day and age. Let's see what else you get for the price. We'll start with the passenger side door panel over there. It has a nice look to it. I like the way it's laid out, 
But the main question to answer here is, are the armrests any more comfortable in the front than they are in the rear? Uh, apparently not. Carrie gives us the thumbs down on that area. I know I myself don't usually drive with my arm up there, but it is what it is. You'll just have to deal with it. There is your power lock button for your power locks to lock and unlock from the passenger side door. Also the control for the power window over there. A nice look with the overall layout. Now here I would call this more of a door bin than what we see in the rear just because of the fact that it's a little bit larger. You have the drink holder or bottle holder there in the front and a little bit of storage space in the rear. As we work our way into the interior, you already saw that we have cloth seating. Price point dictates that. I don't think that's a big deal. Tell me what your thoughts are. Now something I really do like here, whether it's cloth or not, is the contrast between the dark and the light gray that we have here. It would be nice to maybe have a different color for the contrast stitching, but some people might say, hey, that works for me, no big deal. We'll have Carrie hop on into the interior here and we'll take a look at the dash area. As we look at the air conditioning vent over there, the shape, well, it's a little bit different from most vehicles out there. Kind of nice to see things that are different. You have the control for changing the angle of the airflow and all that good stuff. We also have the glove box down there or gloveless glove box as I like to call it because we don't find gloves in there at any point but you can see all the space that's in there actually quite spacious for what it is now one of my favorite areas of this trailblazer is right here it's going to be the center screen I like its size I like the fact that it's angled towards the driver in fact this is really more of a driver focused vehicle than some high performance vehicles I've driven in the past I really like what Chevrolet has done here easy to deal with as far as your settings go, you have wireless capabilities for your cell phone, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You can also go into your settings right here and change a lot of different settings. Let's say you've paired some phones and you want to make changes there, you can do that. It's very easy to do. We'll go back here. We can go to vehicle and you can see you have teen driver mode. That's a good thing to have, especially if this is going to be your teenager's vehicle because you can regulate some things that happen there. They'll have to put their seat belt on before they drive, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of different things that can be done here, but you can see what all is here. Pretty easy to deal with. There is your apps as far as audio, your phone, and OnStar. And yes, you do have a rear view camera. It's just going to be one singular view. You will have your trajectory lines that you can turn off if you want to or turn back on. It is a nice clear view. I think it will do the job just fine. Now we will find single zone climate control down here. Not a big deal, I don't think. Also some connectivity. You will find USB connectivity here and a 12 volt power outlet. Now as far as if you want to hot rod your trailblazer with that 1.3 liter under the hood, well there you go. That's how you can do that. You have a couple of different driving modes to choose from. You can turn traction control off and attempt a front wheel drive burnout if you'd like to. It might not work very well, but it might make for an entertaining video on YouTube. You can also turn off or turn on the auto stop start feature. For those of you who are not fans of the push button style shifters, well, good news. You have the regular style shifter here and you have that L right there. You've got D for drive and L. And if you're wondering what is that L? If you're in a low traction situation and you need to stay in first gear, that's what that's for. And the good thing is that it stays in low gear and it still gives you all the power of the engine. How about the armrest here? I like the height of the armrest. I wish, or I should say the center console, but it doubles as a lid and an armrest for the center console. I do wish that was a little further forward for me at least. I guess if I move the seat back, that could fix that a little bit. But that's the way it is. Now, it doesn't look like there's a lot of room in there, but there actually is. You have the removable tray right there. So a couple of different options as far as what you have with that. A little bit more space here in the front. As far as additional storage space goes, the driver and the passenger seats are both manually adjustable. Now, if I know I'm ready for it and you're probably ready for it. If you're new to our channel or haven't watched us for a while, now it's time for Carrie's driving lounge. We'll have him hop over here and he's gonna help you see what's going on from the driver's perspective. Good morning. It's morning here, vehicle visionary fans and YouTube watchers. Carrie's driving lounge, the Chevy Trail Blazer edition today. Not familiar with this vehicle. And if you're familiar with me, then you know that I like to review these from a position of 
no experience, just as you would do if you're going to test drive this for the first time. So let's get into this and see what's going on here. On this door uh, panel here, we have the, as Tom discussed on the other door, the door lock unlock button. Here's your panel for your mirror left and right and your adjustment for that, your uh, window lock button. Here's your buttons for your uh, windows. The driver window is automatic, the rest are not. Um, open this door here a little bit. Let's see what we have here. Here's your knob for your uh, dimmer control switch for your uh, your dashboard, your light controls, headlights, parking lights, automatic. There's a little pocket here to keep something like a pen or maybe some coins and some change. There's the lever to open the hood. You have a dead pedal there for your left foot. Convenient. Brake and gas rubber or plastic that's all you need here's your lever for your tilt tusk open steering wheel we all know how to work that steering wheel turns very smoothly while we're sitting here in park very smooth you have your stock here for your lights off and on there's an automatic button there for your lights also and let's see if the turn signals work in this vehicle for those people who don't know how to use turn signals yeah the left signal works the right signal works so no excuse not to use those here's your stock on your right side for wiper controls for the rear wiper front wipers your intermittent control also on the steering wheel itself we have a three-spoke steering wheel for the sporty nature of this vehicle here's your button for cruise control off and on reset set and here's your distance to the next the vehicle in front of you Here's your right stock of the steering wheel or column of the steering wheel, spoke, I meant to say, of the steering wheel for uh, your phone activation, hanging it up or cutting it off, and your volume controls for your radio. The steering wheel feels, I mean, it, it, you know, it's a plastic coated steering wheel. It's not thick at all, but it doesn't feel horrible in the hand. Um, it feels okay. The airbag cover, plastic. But for the price point, I guess everything fits. Now, if you decide to drive this vehicle in a sporty nature, like Tom showed you before, I'm going to show you again. Here are your uh, buttons for all those different features. So we're going to go over them on the dashboard here, show that you have auto start stop. That's how you activate it or turn it off, off and on. You also have your lane departure, which will show you on this dashboard here, whether you're still in that mode or not. You also have your stability control off and on. It tells you right there on the screen very clearly whether your traction control is off and on. And if you want to go sporty with this, there's a little flag right there that tells you you're in race mode. If you want to race your little three-cylinder engine, that's just fine also. And a snow mode. And there you go. If you get extra, you need extra traction in the snow, the dashboard tells you everything you need to know. You have a fuel gauge right here to the left. You have your traction control button whether you're wearing your seat belt, there's a compass up here that shows us that we're facing north. Your coolant, your odometer, what you're in as far as uh, drive mode, park, reverse, neutral, and then Tom showed you about the low button, low one, and drive. Up here on the day, on top of my head here, we have the visor, which does, there's no light in that visor. It does, uh, Pull out to cover the sun on your uh, side of the window. That's good. The one on the passenger side does the same thing. I already checked it. You also have a seat belt height adjustment right here for people that are different heights, which is a good thing also. All in all, I think this is a very nice vehicle. Um, for the price point, if you have a vehicle you need to drag behind your motorhome or get your young kid a vehicle, I think this is a very good option if you're shopping different vehicles in this price category. So that would end it for Carrie's Driving Lounge today, Chevy Trailblazer Edition. See you next time, folks. Okay, here we go out on the road. Maybe we should race that Porsche right there. What do you think? Put it in sport mode and off we go. Nope, probably wouldn't work too well. They'd probably drop back just to have some fun with us and then take off. But <laughs> one way or another, yeah, we joke around about the lack of horsepower here, but really that's kind of the point is that this is a model that's out there for those who are looking for something that isn't 
necessarily really expensive and it isn't going to suck down a lot of gas which means that lack of horsepower is beneficial in that respect so there are some benefits to that what about ride quality well from what we've experienced so far i'd say it's acceptable it's not bad for a smaller vehicle like this typically a shorter wheelbase you're going to have a little bit more of a choppy ride but honestly this doesn't seem to be too bad and so that's one advantage to not having really big wheels on it so you have advantages there the seats themselves they, they seem to be pretty comfortable it would be interesting to see what it was like on a long road trip for a couple of hours two or three hours consistently in the vehicle or more to see what that's like but from what I'm experiencing here the cloth interior seems to do the job the steering wheel is comfortable in my hands uh, as far as just the overall usability it does have that kind of plastic material on it but I think that will work it's not as if we're worried that much about it now it's too bad you can't see that I'm not actually going to touch my brakes going through the corner right here like that Porsche just did hmm somebody's better driver and they're probably the better driver than I am right Kerry he's, he's, he's in a Porsche man. that's right he does all the driving for him there you go just had to make note of that but the thing that really impresses me here is the fact that you have such great technology the screen this center screen has very vibrant colors to it very nice graphics very easy to work with and the thing I like about it is that it's not an overload there's not a lot of functionality there so you don't have a lot of menus and sub menus and different things like that that you have to sort through to figure out what it is you need to get to depending on what you're looking for in the first place so a vehicle that is very practical in a multitude of ways not only in price but just in overall usability and like I say also in what you will pay at the gas pump if you're gassing up once a week you will definitely pay less with this vehicle than you will with a lot of others that are out there I do like the fact that the throttle seems to be the gas pedal seems to be responsive to the touch of my foot so that's a good thing I didn't really even pay attention to adjusting to the brake pedal so that tells me that it's probably very easy to adjust to for other people as well so a very well balanced vehicle for what it is it's fairly minimalistic but I think that's good because for the people who are going to buy the Trailblazer that does well now keep in mind there are higher trim levels obviously that do offer a lot more features and functionality if you're looking for that and you'll still be at a reasonable price point so tell me what you think down in the comments section with the 2024 Chevrolet Trailblazer LT do you get more than you pay for and for those of you who want me to answer the question for you think for you yeah I had to say something about it what's my thought on that well in this particular case i do think you get more than you pay for just because the price for this day and age this is one of the lowest priced vehicles you're going to find anywhere not maybe not the lowest but one of the lowest i definitely think you get more than you pay for so tell me what your thoughts are down in the comments section i do want to say a special thanks to my friends here at red river chevrolet for loaning us this trailblazer for the day and a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. That helps us out a lot. If you haven't subscribed just yet, please consider doing so. That way you don't miss any future videos. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and we'll see you there.